Welcome back to Follow the Compass North. Today we have a pretty easy one, the fire triangle. Now the fire triangle is well known to most. It's uh, entry level uh, survival or camp skills. Uh, it's bushcraft 101. So it shouldn't take us too long to cover what it is. Uh, and in addition to that, ways that we can utilize this not only to make fire, but to put it out or to use it in other ways. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, we need heat, fuel, and oxygen to make fire. If you have enough of these things, fire happens. Sometimes on purpose, sometimes not so much on purpose. Uh, so if we're trying to build a fire in the wilderness, uh, we're going to need our fuel. Our fuel is typically brush or uh, wood or leaves or twigs. So you can make feather sticks or heartwood shavings. You can create your own fuel or bring your own fuel. You got uh, hexamine, trioxine, a whole litany of different fuels out there. Um, we could go on listing that one for quite some time. Oxygen is fairly inherent to the uh, <laughs> to our situation, or we'd have bigger issues, and uh, fire would be the uh, secondary thought. And then our heat source is typically a metal match or matches, a lighter, butane stove, whatever we can use as an ignition for this. Uh, so fairly simple concept. Uh, it's a cool little graphic and it's, like I said, very entry level stuff. But what can we do in order to use this in another way? What can we do to use this to extinguish a fire? Uh, so I've got listed over here, water and dirt to remove our heat. So water dousing your fire, uh, this is fairly effective uh, for surface heat. Uh, you tend to scatter some of the fuel, you tend to uh, deprive it of a little bit of oxygen, but mostly you're extinguishing that heat source so it cannot continue combustion. However, water is sometimes not enough. If you have a deep fire, a fire that's been burning for more than six hours, and you have a root system underneath that is dried out and heated up, you could have hot fuel underground just waiting to be exposed. We see this a lot with root fires or peat, deep peat, coal fires. They can go on for a long time because you have heated fuel and anytime it's exposed to oxygen, it just lights right back up. Uh, so dousing your fire in the wilderness may not be enough. You might want to dig it out, dig up that hot dirt, make sure you spread it out, make sure there's not a concentration of heat underground where you can see a pop-up fire. This is a cause of wilderness fires almost every single year. Our next one here, oxygen. If we're going to deprive our fire of oxygen, we can smother it. Um, there's a cool little trick where you can put a candle in a glass of water or in a uh, shallow um, dish of water and then you put a glass over it and as it burns the oxygen, it sucks the water up into the cup. You've probably seen this video. Uh, it's a fun little trick to do. Uh, and what it does is as it burns that oxygen down, it eventually smothers itself because there's plenty of heat, there's plenty of fuel, but it can no longer combust, it can no longer oxidize on that level just because of the lack of the oxygen. Now, extremely fast fires or explosions would have its own oxidizer built in so that it can chemically oxidize and not have to wait for oxygen from the atmosphere. There's a difference between black powder and a gasoline fire. A gasoline fire won't provide its own oxygen, so you get this big billowing fire that's trying to uh, eat up that oxygen in the air, but is self-smothering because it cannot expand fast enough. And then an explosion will have its own oxidizer, which would allow it to rapidly burn up and cause that combustion at a, at a faster rate. Hopefully not something that we see in the wilderness. So what can we do here? We can smother or we can bank. Bank is a term that we use for burying a hot, hot fire so that you maintain that heat and that fuel underground. And you can leave this fire for hours on end. I've left banked fires for six to eight hours, come back at the end of the day, dig out the dirt over top of it. You have hot, red hot coals underneath. Uh, give it a little bit of oxygen and it flares right back up. If you're having a hard time starting fires, you're doing friction fires, bow and drill, uh, bamboo fire saws, or a, uh, um, oh, there's a fire plow method. There's a bunch of those that we'll cover in a future video. If you're doing friction fires, you don't want to extinguish that every day. So banking it is a way to remove oxygen, maintain that heat in the fuel because oxygen is the easiest one to add back into that equation. Our final one here, we could let our fuel completely burn out. Um, 
useful. Uh, we've all seen it. Fires overnight, fires in, uh, burning down to coals in the hearth, or just campfires burning out because you don't have enough firewood. Very easy concept there. Uh, and then you could also scatter it, drag out the fuel uh, away from the heat source and allow it to extinguish. I try not to use this method unless I have a large water source nearby to make sure I'm not just scattering hot uh, oxygenated fuel into the woods where there's more fuel and it can create more heat and eat more oxygen. Uh, this is a recipe for uh, fires if you don't do this properly. So you want to be also looking at a way to remove the heat and not just throwing the, the hot coals out there. Fire has a way of getting out of hand. So it's an easy one today, it won't take too much of your time. Um, you've seen this before, I hope you've seen this before, if this is your first introduction to it, welcome to the, uh, welcome to the club. Um, hopefully we saw it a little bit a different way by talking about different ways to remove one of these legs and destroy that fire triangle today. In the future, I'm going to be doing a tinder show where I pull out all these different types of tinder, show how to light them. I'd like to do a couple of friction fires. We'll get out to the field and do some actual real fires, demonstrate how to do both dry and wet conditions fires, uh, maybe talk about a couple of different of those ways to approach it. There's a litany of different videos we can do on that subject, and I look forward to doing it. Uh, what I'd like from you guys is throw suggestions down in the comments on what type of fire you'd like to see first and what method you'd like to see me try out, and we'll start off with that one. If you like what you saw here today, check out my other videos, like, subscribe, leave a comment, anything that you do to help the channel would be appreciated. Thank you and have a good night.